It's every Red Raiders favorite podcast. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. It is the juice. You got Tech Talk on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. Today's top headlines. We will begin with some drama from the National League. Clint, Gus, Brennan all hanging out with you. Yeah. <laughs> the drama sounder. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll start with this Mets Braves game, and and yeah, this is a national, but it is interesting because the Mets win eight to seven. So this one goes down to the wire, but it's game one of two. And if you missed us talk about this on Thursdays, where you could see this getting set up, the Mets are in. The Mets are in regardless into the playoffs. The Braves, however, they need to win so that they both get in. However, if they lose, you have the outside party of the Arizona Diamondbacks going, please, please Mets sweep it because then they'll get in. If that doesn't happen, well, then both of your teams from the World Series last year will be on the outside sitting in when it comes to the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, there's your (laughs) drama (laughs) for baseball. (laughs) What were you doing? What were you referencing there? (laughs) What was that, Clint? Did I ask you to sound like a cow? I don't know. An awooga horn, perhaps? That's great. Uh, speaking of baseball, how about this? Hunter Dobbins was tabbed as the Red Sox uh, MILB starting pitcher of the year. Dobbins went 8-5 and five with a 3.08 ERA in 25 starts across AA Portland and AAA Worcester. Uh, the right-handed pitcher has been tabbed there for that award the organization announced earlier today think about that and his catcher here at tech as the rockies minor league player of the year that's right or was that player of the month i can't remember regardless full for very good things yeah. as well yeah so, sure yeah i know we talked about that and i can't remember it yeah, happy uh, happy for those dudes. That's big time. That'll get him an invitation to camp and a chance to make the roster. He's currently ranked uh, their eighth pitcher in the uh, Boston system. There, he'll he'll always be a bit of a uh, you know. If fans are making the what if lists around baseball, everybody turns to Gingery coming mm-hmm. off the National Pitcher of the Year deal, whereas Dobbins was coming off the COVID year where it looked like we had a decent team. So the next next year looks like you're set up to be pretty good with him on Friday night. Last start before the season. Yeah. The last start, like whatever that is, February 7th or whatever. He's out there throwing his little four innings or whatever. Walk does the pitch and shakes his hand, walk off. I mean, he shakes his head and walks off to the dugout. I remember sitting there watching it. Oh, that's not good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That wasn't. And they still drafted him in the eighth round anyway. So, and here we are. Yeah, happy for that dude. He was here last year, last uh, last December, kind of leading into Christmas, throwing with Coach Coach uh, Gardner uh, here here Mm -hmm. at the facility. And he's not from here. He's from Bryan College Station. So, coming in, taking advantage of new facilities. Uh, Speaking of the uh, playoffs playoffs I could hear Brennan doing it behind the glass without even looking up <laughs> I looked up to see him doing it playoffs uh the Astros we know who their wild card round opponent will be now officially and it is an interesting one because it's the Detroit Tigers you can hear that game tomorrow starting at one o'clock for game one over on 100.7 the score after an abbreviated version of the bottom line 130 first pitch from Valdez uh, will go for the Astros so that's a fun matchup yeah absolutely 
Uh, the Rangers, their season is officially over. They did end it. Well, I mean, it was, we, we knew they weren't going to the playoffs for a while, but oh, you know, they've played the last game of the season. They did sweep the Angels after an 8 to nothing win. Nathan Avaldi uh, went seven innings, allowing just four hits. Uh, their final record, 78 and 84, when it was all said and done. The Houston Texans, they got a win yesterday. Well, the Jaguars are in all sorts of trouble right now trying to figure some things out. They had a lead in the first quarter. actually looked a lot better early, but the Texans battle back. They win 24-20. to They get a touchdown in the fourth quarter to take a lead after it was 20-17. to C.J. Stroud continues to have a very good year. There's a couple of touchdowns, uh, and they beat the Jaguars to improve to 3-1. and one. Mentioned this uh, earlier, Texas Tech soccer. They have yet another two to nothing win under their belt. Excuse me, the 25th ranked Texas Tech Raiders. Who knows where they will uh, be ranked uh, this week? See what happens. Hopefully, bump up a couple of spots. Both of those goals were early on in the second half. In fact, within the first two minutes and three seconds of the second half. So, yeah, uh, both of those were snipes. Mm-hmm. The uh, as in snipers. And I say that, it's, I don't know that soccer people use it, but hockey people use it, but that's what I was thinking because both of those were just dribbling around, dribbling around, laser into the top corner of the goal, keeper flying across the net. Yeah, not going to get to that one. Just stuck it in the top corner. I don't know if they do or top not, shelf they or... should use snipes because, I mean, it applies. Yeah. If not, you've just taught them a new word. Mm-hmm. What is a duck snort in soccer terms? Yeah. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. That is one of my favorite sports terms of all time. And uh, I think... Th- that other goalie comes out a little too far and you just chip it over their head yeah. and bounce it in. <laughs> yeah, Keep or her. like when... Sorry. Yeah, when maybe maybe whenever you're obviously trying to do something else with the ball and you shank it so bad you still score, like a little dribbler or something mm-hmm. off the side of the foot. Yeah, it's got to be one that just, r- 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 just rolls in. Yeah. It's got to be something that just... You can hear the sad trumpet everybody, noise behind yeah, it. Yeah, everybody just watches it go. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, well, we can try that. Dear soccer term. Go experts. look at. You might be. You might be able to go look at the uh, game winner at Texas, the little hail mary last mm, year in mm-hmm. Austin. You know, tie game. We get the little four second left kick that ends up just bouncing in. That might be okay. close. It was so delightful. It's hard to think of it as a duck snort, but sure. It was because it set off a celebration. But, yeah, that team, uh, well, you know what happens after you play a, a three-game road trip? You get to come back home. You get a three-game homestand. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they're about to start on Friday with Baylor. Just one game this weekend and then two two home games next week. And, uh, boy, you look at that schedule. You just look at you just blur your eyes and look at the schedule and you go way down it. I'm like, they're way down here at the bottom. Mm-hmm. I mean, it ends at the end of the month, so I think it, I think it goes to like October twenty fifth as the last game. But they're down to like their last six, seven matches on the year. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, one of those, of course, will be when they return home against Baylor on Friday, and then they will see Colorado, who uh, was ranked coming into uh, the weekend, so possibly a top twenty five matchup. I have no idea what they did on the other side, and then you will see Iowa State, and yeah, six games left. And not to look too far ahead, but you have that uh, regular season ender at home against BYU, which should also be really fun. In between that from Iowa State and BYU, you also have another two-game road trip uh, where you'll be at West Virginia on a Thursday and then at Cincinnati on a Sunday, which travel-wise makes sense. It is Tech Talk here on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com, breaking down the 44-41 to win over the Cincinnati Bearcats next. Keep hanging out with us. We'll go all the way to 6 o'clock. That time it is the Cowboys Hour. Back with more next on Double T 97.3. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. They were in uh, L.A. on Saturday. Did not go very well against the uh, Ducks. The Ducks, thirty-four to thirteen. Yeah, that was that was a big point spread to begin with. 
Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, tw- was it? Am I making up that it was, was twenty? I was thinking it was seventeen or eighteen, but it went as expected. A road yeah. thrashing. Yeah. Uh, plenty of things in the Big Twelve that did not go as as expected, and we will get into some of that, uh, including a little, uh, well, Arizona, Utah, a little UCF, Colorado. But we have time for that a little later. Let's start with the game that happened here in Lubbock, though. Clint, Gus, Brennan, and his Tech Talk on Double T ninety seven three, and it was. 44 to 41 as the final. Uh, I've seen still some, I would say, fairly upset fans, and it's strange that most of the like like the rage category is going to the offense. I get you have some series that probably uh, so you would do over again certainly if you could, but uh, <laughs> the I don't get the the rage factory over it. I mean you're two and zero in Big Twelve play. Uh, you're four and one right now, and I get you haven't gotten you haven't got here maybe in a way that you thought you would, and you had some very terrible looks along the way, specifically at Washington State. But you're four and one right now, um, and look, you're pulling out games that past regimes would not have pulled out, and you're winning games past regimes would right. not have won. Who who one of our pros posted that? Uh, maybe Jack Anderson, maybe mm-hmm. there was some social this weekend in which he said that like. In the past, we don't win this game. Yeah. Not if mm-hmm. he was saying his teams. I don't know, maybe, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a down fourteen to three at one point in the first quarter. Yeah, um, you you do the fourth. opposite because you go two drives with just three points and you're not clicking on all cylinders, and then you find some offense there in the second quarter and battle back and forth, and yeah, yeah. Fourth fourth double digit come from behind win. Under Coach McGuire, Texas, mm-hmm. two years ago, OU, mm-hmm. two years ago, UCF last year. Overall thoughts, if you were giving your Dr. Mike Gustafson grade, let's go from sides of the ball. Let's start with the offense. What what would you give them on red pen to paper? Yeah, they, they uh, won the game for this team. Mm-hmm. Um, um, uh, yeah, it'd be a pretty good grade. Um, a minus, B plus, somewhere in there. Um, balanced. I mean, if you're in the RTDB crowd, mm-hmm. you got your wish. Mm-hmm. 32 for 170 something. Uh, for Taj alone, uh, Morton with two, pull, Morton pulled two keepers, like two RPO. Just, yeah. Pulled it. There was one. I loved the design on, yards. on the uh, speed option to the right, and you pull a couple guys right. to the left. Everybody slants to the left. And, and as, uh, as far as I know, that's the first look like we've had like that where uh, all of a sudden you, you scratch back the other direction. And then, I mean, Morton picks up a huge chunk of yardage on that drive, on that play, but it also looked like if he would have pitched it, Brooks would have done the same. And right. You blocked. It was really that well. open. Yeah. yeah. It was that yes. open, and then you blocked well downfield. It's like they were, yeah. It, they were they were definitely cheating or stacking to one side there, and it was a it was mm-hmm. a tremendous call, and ran it to the weak side away from everything. And as you said, it was well blocked, and just mm-hmm. the the call was was great against the that particular alignment. However, that went. It yeah. was uh, Baron checked into it. Never know. But my goodness, and it's like you said, he could have pitched it like, why? There's just real estate <laughs> yeah, just, here. Yeah. Yeah. Barron was three for 46. Um, one of those being the 26 yarder. And I don't know if it was that one or the other keeper down here. They ran it again late down in the, I think that was the first and goal from the five. He pulled it and they sniffed it out and mm-hmm. stuffed it. I think, I think I'm on the right position. Yeah. That's, there. that's the one. Uh, I, if, if you're annoyed at that ser- that entire series right there, I, g- I get it. I mean, I was too, but I, overall it doesn't like dampen my thoughts no. on what the offense did. Yeah, the with too many mm-hmm. too many chunk plays defensively. I mean, th- that conversation starts and ends. But I, I get it. It's just so much easier to gripe about offense. So we'll you know text in your gritching about the offense. Might as well go ahead. Uh, I- our, yeah, that the defense found a way to make. A couple of big plays created uh, early, you know, in the mm-hmm. what was that third quarter, early fourth, the fumble recovery, mm-hmm. and the obviously the pick six and the dropped interception. Oh man, I didn't realize he had. Okay, so I did not realize 
that his thumb had that much tape on it up from the booth. I'm just going, man, like instantly if he could have that back or he's got to be beating himself up or, you know, he's going right. crazy right now because uh, that doesn't completely end the game. But uh, I mean, it, it might yeah. as well have. And then uh, up, up there, the way ours works is like we're, we're watching the game live on the TV up there as well. There's a couple of TVs, right? And so you're down watching the game. And from us, if like, oh, we need to see that again, you just look up. And then it's behind from the delay, right? And so it's 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 about I don't know, Brendan. What would you say? Three fourths of a play behind, and then look up there and watch him drop it, and him put his hand up, and just like, oh, uh, okay, that yeah. makes it that no, ramps up the difficulty a little bit. All right. Yep, understood. I, uh, but yeah, you you just feel like oh man, these guys still have a pulse because I think the pulse mm-hmm. was going to just about be put out right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sure enough, they went down and scored, held us, got the ball back, and were able to engineer it. Uh, yeah, I thought the uh, – boy, we had a we had a call go our way. It seemed like – because I, I just thought there's no way they reversed the QB sliding, mm-hmm. you know, deal. And But it's that, that, that thing's so jicky because guys slide late, and that's, that's fine. It's a player mm-hmm. safety deal. But thank goodness our guys went over him basically – Baskerville was the one that they called, and then you go back and watch it. Like, I'm not sure he touched him. Yeah. And uh, thank goodness. And uh, so then the 10 minute runoff, which Satterfield was yeah. irked about that, I understand. But how the, the I thought the biggest sequence, and I actually went home and scrolled ahead to this because 25, 24 seconds left, and they run the little play. We, we I think they run it for a first down, but he stays in bounds. So they're mm-hmm. the setting the ball. We're about to roll the clock, and their running back started back to the huddle limping, and then he limps off. And mm-hmm. so our coaches expertly, expertly saw the substitution and went, hang on, let us get our chance to sub a couple guys in. And then you get two big lumberjacks jogging in there and setting Boy. up in 14 seconds. Go That thing went from 24 <laughs> to 10, and they threw the two out of, I think, the one or maybe two out-of-bounds things. Yeah, that really weren't even close. They were well well guarded, and then a fifty one yard field goal. I I, I was that sad. went. I mean, because if that kid, I mean, and that would have taken a lot of savvy. But yeah. you could see two guys on this end, on the on the left side of the screen, and again, this was a lot going on at the time, just sitting up in the stands. Because again, if you're just listening, mm-hmm. I don't sit in the booth. You could see the two guys on their side, like waving like i'm sure they were thinking just sit down like just just get in your stance mm-hmm. and stand there with your ankle jacked up and let us throw it away and reset mm-hmm. the clock and instead he comes off and our coaches saw that and it, that, that to me was the difference because do you really want them running four more plays at that point mm-hmm. hell no it's either a chip shot field goal or i mean the way they were just remember because that drive started on the 10 5 10 yeah you know, and it was just gash, yeah, gash, Yeah, I was at gash. the 10. Yes. I, I, so I sat there and, like, man, was thinking as as that play that you were talking about where you were running off real slow as you get the substitution, Perfect. I was like, is this the first time that this has actually benefited, like, the Perfect. Red Raiders? Because it's hard to come up with others where you've been on, like, the upset and annoyed end of it. This is Tech Talk. The podcast put together with Red Raider fans in mind. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. A playoff spot deciding game between the Mets and the Braves in the uh, bottom of the second already. There's your, uh, there's your late season drama. Yeah, I might as well just call this October baseball because it's survival mode there. Mm-hmm. There, there at this point, the Braves have to win to get in. And the other thing we've got is a Diamondbacks team that's probably at the clubhouse right now. I don't know, maybe they're sitting at home. I don't know how that works, but probably bags packed, and they can do one of a couple things. They can get on a plane and go play. I think there's two different options based on outcomes here, or depending on what happens here, they can sit at home. Mm-hmm. Like, so you could, you know, you're thinking, well, let's oh, just, that's got us. I have go. not once thought about actually packing your bags. Right. If you're a professional sports team waiting on a playoff spot it. 
and then going, oh, we got to go home and unpack. Think the about bags. it. If they get in, they're trying. What their dream is is the, what the Rangers did last year, right? That they would be gone for about two weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it goes mm-hmm. right, if they're able to get in, they go on the road for the wild card round. Then they play the first couple on the road, right? Isn't mm-hmm. that right? Ten days, you know. But anyway, the are you know so they're they're they didn't just pack a little overnight bag. They're, you know, you could they could be playing golf tomorrow, or they could be teeing it up. I mean, it's just there's, Double there's golf a lot. That was yeah. good. That was really well done. There's a lot hanging yeah. in the balance here. Teeing it up or teeing it up. Yeah, yep. he'll be here all week. Contractually, he has to be. Out of being. You know what? All this uh, talk of the action has me in the mood for a play of the day, Brennan. Motion coming to the left, Soresby. Gets pressured, throws oh, it, it's intercepted. intercepted. Red Raiders have it coming the other way, 40, 30, 25, 20. He's going to score. No, correction, A.J. McCarty. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Big pick six uh, mm-hmm. in that game. Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the last time you would, you know, find the end zone in that game, but. In hindsight, that helps you uh, win the game in in the end in the uh, at the end of the day. One speaking of pressure, one of the few times you get now it wasn't right. from the defensive line. Right, it's been Roberts coming there from the linebacker spot, and AJ McCarty just uh, reaping the benefits of it. As it was, I mean, eerily similar to your pick against Arizona State. At least how it how it works out. And I know right. Arizona State won. That's a lot longer of a pass, and that's going to the sideline. This one's shallow and to the middle. And you also have Isaac Smith on the first one, actually coming from the defensive line spot. But this time you hit home on that blitz, and Ben Roberts' pressure forces. By the way, the first inf- – and, and Sorsby was really good. I'm hoping mm-hmm. it's not that you made him look good because I, I had thought he was fairly impressive coming into the Jones. And then he had a great game, and, and you can say on the same thing, dang near led them to a comeback. Right. And we're all thankful that it didn't work out. Um, but for a guy that had played really clean football and for an offensive line that lived up to what they were billed and certainly your defen- deficiencies in the pass rush and your defensive line and injuries there did not help that scenario. But you have uh, you talked about the defense did make a couple of big plays and two of those are turnovers, one of them there. And it's like, man, when you hit home on your pressure, it's crazy. Good things happen, Gus. Yes, yes, indeed. And you go, uh, okay, how do we get more of this? Yeah, and and uh, it, it feels like we are feeling the loss of – we talked about this back in August. You know, it looks like we've lost our two starting edge rushers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, there's still some viable Division One edge rushers on this team, and they're young. And and so that yeah. that helps in terms of establishing and creating some depth. When the other two are back, you're gonna have like five experienced, five six d- experienced outside linebacker slash edge rushers. But right now, that uh, you know we, we would where we would be wanting some heat on the QB, and we're not getting it. And and you're in you're in a bad spot in that game again. And here yeah here on the. Uh, on the age Florence Center chat line. I feel like if Lux is back, we won't have as many issues with past events. He doesn't heal all in that secondary, but another game where the young secondary struggles and I think takes a step back from what you saw the week before. And part of that problem is when you can't trust them, it's it's hard to dial up blitzes because you're leaving those guys oh, who are already yeah. struggling just – I mean, to to fend on their own and not have any sort of help there. So it's you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't right now when really the only unit defensively that's played consistently is your linebackers. <laughs> and and it hasn't been all bad from the secondary. It hasn't been all bad from the defensive line. But you just have not found any consistency there to feel good about it, um, especially if you are missing an older guy and you're your best cover guy like Lux. Like that is just glaringly obvious. Again, he does not make you a perfect secondary but you certainly look a lot better when he's out there. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, we knew going into the season that he's the best corner. Now, the good news here, I guess, is 
you know, one more game and then an open week mm-hmm. to hopefully clear some of those names off that questionable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's back list. on the questionable list, by yep. the way. And, and on the whole, it was uh, quite a bit of uh, defensive guys. You've seen guys like Plunk, who was your third stringer, who also saw the field on there. Yep. Chapman Lewis on there. It's like, oh, man, that's like the last thing you need right now is to start – losing more pieces in in the uh, secondary let alone the defensive line and lewis had a hamstring right Mm -hmm. yeah um that's not good that probably didn't bode well for this weekend but again maybe that open week will buy him the extra time he needs but yeah Mm -hmm. that uh i think we were three deep on the on the safety side opposite baskerville Mm -hmm. um yeah and i it, it look this isn't the the thin stuff that you know we got back into 2016 15 there were some years where we were converting receivers to db just to field a <laughs> to field a dime defense uh mm-hmm. i don't think it's in fact we know that it's not to that point but uh yeah it'd be really good to have the veteran best corner coming mm-hmm. back i mean getting on the field because you just think about the think about what's left on the schedule and there's some teams that can spin it and throw it all over the place and so it's you know, we're going to be. You, you, we're trying to get to our whatever our goal is. It's going to probably involve uh, some points being scored. But I also have I hold some optimism about this defense longer term because there are a ton of young dudes on the field mm-hmm. getting their feet wet or more, and and that that experience just it pays off at some point. I mean, most of this team is back next year and beyond and and that's where we can start to see recruiting classes starting to stack but yeah so, it's it's uh you know there's some growing pains some of those young guys it's yeah that's more than getting your feet wet it's john wayne you know how to swim and throwing you into the <laughs> yeah. water oh, that's right no doubt no <laughs> doubt and we knew that there was some of that uh you know some there was going to be some exposure maybe um you know that both of those both sides of the line d line o line were maybe uh, but, you know, they're just okay right now mm-hmm. um but uh and maybe that's what we thought going into the season and we're getting de- you know there's there's stretches in here where we're getting decent play um but it's not a ne- neither of those units is dominant um but what do we talk about playing cincinnati like hopefully these guys can can uh wasn't it wasn't uh hold serve it wasn't hold serve man i'm going blank i use the phrase but just like stand up just Mm -hmm. stalemate yeah and they did they didn't have to go dominate the other team for us to have a chance they just you know they gave morton time to throw they created a bunch of holes for taj not not in limitless holes but did a pretty good job and uh same thing with the d line uh back with more next it is tech talk on double t 97.3 podcast that finishes your workday in a very red raider way this is the tech talk podcast from double t 97.3 presented by cantex roofing and construction it is tech talk here on double t 97.3 and double t 97.3.com clint scott dr mike gustafson brennan Riker behind the glass taking care of us uh, you can hear the high school fan zone tonight, 7 o'clock, 100.7 the score, right here in the First United Bank studio. Tonight, coaches from Coronado and Estacado will join Randy Rosetta as they break down their seasons thus far. After the Cowboys hour, which is at 6 o'clock, directly after us here on Double T 97.3, it's Monday Night Football, a battle from the NFC. The Lions and the Seahawks go main to beak tonight. Hear that at 7. Uh, this on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Clint, how many yards did the tight ends have? Well, it wasn't 61. They had uh, 19 receiving. <laughs> 32 total with the 13-yard uh, rush from Jalen Conyers, but that still wouldn't have helped my cause. This on the chat line. Would y'all take 8-4 and four right now? Yeah, I probably would. I would. Is that that, that uh, either means... Uh... The serve was held, and you run the table at home and get one on the road, or lose one of these last three at home and win two on the road. Mm-hmm. I'd probably take that. Yeah, yeah, I would too. And and the big thing there is that you just mentioned is is just the Jekyll and Hyde field 
feel, uh, especially offensively, when you do hit the road. Um, I, I don't feel great about this matchup you have coming up this weekend. Arizona has not set the world on fire, but they're also coming off a massive road win uh, over Utah. And the, the biggest thing there is uh, if you're not healthy in the secondary, that's where as maybe pedestrian as they've actually looked at times this year, there's still a lot of talent from specifically Fafita to Tedaroa McMillan um, that I, I just don't feel awesome about right now. See if I can ramp myself up by the time we get there. But I just think the then you add in tough environment and good team, Iowa State, on the road. Tough environment and a good team, although trying to find some things out of their own, Oklahoma State. Um, and then TCU's just is always a weird game. All, all of those things considered, I, I would absolutely take eight and four right now. Yeah, and the Colorado game, suddenly that uh, – Oh, man, how about that? Yeah, they, they went out and played their best game at, uh, at UCF, I think. It appeared to be because it looked like UCF was rolling. Yeah, and those two the, – the key thing that's happening for them is – I mean, there are a lot of good things that happen in a win like that, but their two best players show up every week. Mm-hmm. And one of them struck a Heisman pose, and it wasn't Shadur Sanders. And I'm just <laughs> fine with that yeah. because I uh, defy you to – I mean, I, you know, the whole give it, to, give it to another SEC quarterback that had the best regular season thing – that that mm-hmm. that's great, and boy, we saw a doozy on Saturday night from oh my gosh, Bama and holy cow, Mar- Mar- Mercy, that looked like some Big Twelve shootout stuff there. How about your boy Kalen DeBoer? Yeah, we win there. Yeah. Tried to give it away, but uh, but but yeah, the, tell me who's tell me who's better than Hunter? I, as I, I think he's the best college football player. I, I think I don't, who the he, hell's the award go I, I to? Mean, yeah, because. I already think he is. I mean, he. I, it's hard to compare can go around eating. everybody around yeah. everybody else in the country without sitting down and just watching all this tape. But just as a cornerback alone, he's yeah. incredible. And they can go uh, eight and, and then four, you add and I feel that, that way. Yeah, and then you add in he's not just like uh, a, a. He's a solid three option at receiver. Like he is a whichever route he decides to go in the NFL, he will be successful. And and right now, yeah, I totally agree with you. And I said this going into that game uh, that if it happened, I would be prepared to eat my words. And I'm, I'm ready to eat my words because Colorado, in multiple ways, is not the team I expected them to be this year. And and it wasn't that I'm shocked that Shadur Sanders is good at playing quarterback. It's not that I'm shocked that Travis Hunter uh, looks like the best player on the face of the planet. I am shocked that in – big time moments that they have answered the bell and Baylor's not good but they had no business winning that game they found a way they weren't supposed to be able to stop UCF's running attack and then you add in oh there's all this rain and all this moisture surely this gives the advantage to UCF over what Colorado does and the finesse and all this stuff and they just dominated them I mean I was shocked how how bad that game was for UCF I got uh I think we've got K-State at Colorado two weekends. I think it's on our open week. I mm-hmm. believe that's right. Um, in fact, let me check that. But I uh, yeah, yeah that, that that's that's open week. That's uh, going that's in, in Boulder, going right? going into Boulder. Yeah. yeah, that'll be interesting. But yeah, just those two guys. I mean, when you've got two first round picks one at QB heck they you know Shadur Sander who knows where he'll be drafted it'll be high though mm-hmm. and and on Travis Hunter I mean, it's just what you said I mean it's he, he's not Otani yet but y- you separate the players mm-hmm. and it sounds like the things you talk about with Otani where you go hey as a pitcher he's you mm-hmm. know this pre-surgery obviously but right he was a top seven or eight starting pitcher last mm-hmm. year Oh, as a hitter, you know, yeah. this year, as we enjoy him at DH doing the 50 50 thing, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, you can take this, separate the two players out and go, you know, the hitting deal is going to last longer than the pitching thing, I would assume, after two Tommy Johns. Mm-hmm. When it does, okay. And the same thing with Hunter. You can go somewhere and 
I mean, I don't. I doubt that he'll go to the NFL and play 110 snaps a game. I don't know which, if, he's, if he's that. Which, by the way, I know we we throw it out, but still, like connecting. Yeah, he's doing both of these things you're talking about really well. And how many snaps has he taken a game? Ooh. Like you add in uh, the uh, call it the fitness, if he's you will. Toying with college kids. Yeah, and I. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm amazed by it, and just the. I mean, of course, the highlights don't show the eight yard gains that mm-hmm. they throw to him. But it feels like every game there's a shock play. You know, there's a there's a mm-hmm. forty yarder, him going up, and you know some defensive thing, or him him. I mean, don't get into a one on one, go up and get a ball thing because he's coming down with it. Mercy. You, you had them, and then the, I mean the surprise of BYU. I mean, until proven wrong, they're right. They're a top Big Twelve team, and I'm not just saying yeah, they're top Big Twelve team from a record, but they keep on looking impressive. And Baylor, on the other hand, speaking of BYU, I'll be here in two did you and see half the weeks. picture of their AD? Yes. Oh my gosh, hands on the knee. It's, it's not or a like, surrender, Cobra. A, What's the hands on the hey, knee? That's not a like picture. The, that's a video. Oh, that's I just 16, I just saw the still. Yeah, there's a oh, 16 man. second video of that, dude. Put up the tarp. Yeah. Put it up. It's Tech Talk on Double T 97.3. The podcast that finishes your workday in a very Red Raider way. This is the Tech Talk Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It is our number three of Tech Talk. You can get us on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. Clint Scott, Dr. Mike Gustafson, Brennan Riker. We're all learning to count here. Uh, we are live One from the... One hour. Ha, 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 ha. Two hour. Ha, ha, ha. Brendan the count. Keep going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Three hour. Ha, ha, ha. Are you just like every day like, One stupid host. Ha, ha. Two, two stupid hosts. <laughs> Glad we can help you there. We are live from the First United Bank Studio. You can call us on the Visual Edge IT hotline, 806-771-0973, and you can hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We have an email. Sending myself emails. Perfect. Uh, this was from July 25th of last year. Oh, my. Now, this was not a three-person prediction, and if you're doing... Uh, the math there, speaking of math, ah, 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 doing date math, this was a different three-person lineup at the time and said other third person, Mr. Aaron Dickens, forwarded this to me. Thank you. This was just from Dr. Mike Gustafson. This was a Gus-only oh, prediction. This might be some baseball-related stuff if you it was are the day after the regular season. 100% correct. Wow. What was it? Let's see. Jace Young will be in the majors before the end of the 2024 season. Hands together, everybody. (laughs) Gus really did it. He nailed it. That's a big deal to get those uh, those sending myself emails, especially one that's 15, 16 months off. Speaking of (laughs) the Detroit Tigers, (laughs) manager A.J. Hinch. Yeah. Cool little post-game party clip here. We'll let this play. In the middle of the season, remember I asked you, what kind of team do you want to be? I guess you wanted to be a playoff team. And let me set that because that it's really the visual that's as good as the audio. Of course, it's you know you're expecting this this speech or mm-hmm. hey you know, we appreciate you guys grinding blah 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 this and team he, has so much heart right exactly and i'm happy to be here and he gets there and he goes you know you hear it but ask you got what type of team you wanted to be and he's mm-hmm. got a lid already <laughs> popped champagne thing in his right hand and he starts shaking that thing up i guess you wanted to be a playoff team and then <laughs> and that's why those dudes just went bonkers because you're ex- probably expecting like, hey, the manager's just gonna say something and then turn us loose, and we can all dump stuff on his head. But he's like, he's like lighting the lighting the fir- first firework there. It's a pretty good clip. And the roof, the yes. roof, the roof is on fire. Now that's uh, Jace Young. He is on the postseason roster, as you would expect, and uh, yeah. they crank it up tomorrow. 
in Houston. You can hear it on the. You can hear it on one hundred point seven. The score one o'clock pregame. And uh, figured he'd be in the big leagues, hence the sending ourselves email there. But don't think that we would have started this season going, "Hey, if if you if we'd have guessed, if we'd have taken a poll, who who which young brother is going to play October baseball? (laughs) If we'd have polled a (laughs) hundred random sampling (laughs) listeners, would we'd have what ninety eight to two? Yeah, and we'd go, who were the two that were just like Astro fans trying to spite right, everybody? Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. Or, yeah, or, or Josh stole their girlfriend at Tech or something like that. I mean, just, so, yeah. But yeah, I have very sophisticated algorithms. Exactly. Super happy for the young family. Super happy for Jace. It'll be interesting because it's left on left tomorrow. Two really good left-handers. Tariq Skubal's won the AL Triple Crown, which is what wins ERA strikeouts. I think that's mm-hmm. right. He'll go um, against – what's his name? Cali and Brave. I'm going blank. Um, for the Astros. Framber. So, yes, Framber. 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 And so that's a, that's a pretty good matchup. And uh, away we go with playoff baseball. Really, we've got playoff baseball going on right now because the Braves and the – Mets are going at it. The Mets won the first game of that doubleheader. This, of course, set off by the hurricane. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the most Thursday. nervous uh, team of that game is the Diamondbacks. Yeah, the D-backs is the are one in the of it. Because they have no control at this point. Yeah. The, if the Braves win, they're in. If the Mets win game two here today, the D-backs are in. The Mets have already clinched their spot. Mm-hmm. So they don't have as much to play for. However, that first game today was full of – Fireworks, huge comebacks, rally. It looked like the end of that Bama Georgia game. Where oh my gosh! It's like big so, comeback, so and then okay, you thought that was good. What's this? Answer, yeah. answer, answer. Well, that uh, first game, and then you had the you had those two teams kind of mocking each other a little bit, and you're yeah. like, you know what? This, I don't think anyone just mail on this second game in this game we're watching here. Mm-hmm. Even though the Mets, you know, the Mets can probably save some pitch in and not go bonkers because they're mm-hmm. they're hopping on a plane. And, uh, yeah, the D-backs, D-backs are sitting. I mean, they knew they would be in this situation because what the D-backs need is a sweep. It didn't mm-hmm. matter by who. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, they, they would have been just as big of Braves fans right. as they are Mets fans right now had weird, Atlanta won the first one. Yeah, what a weird scenario. But here we are, and, you know, texting with some friends of mine, like, yes, October baseball, almost, you know, in parentheses, <laughs> but that's here we are. This is a – September. Be fun stuff. Yeah, you can go to – October. ML- you can go to uh, MLB.com, probably go to, what, can we go to Double T 97.3 and get the uh, playoff, the entire playoff picture? If not, go to mm-hmm. MLB.com. Yeah. I know we've got the games that we're covering, which is the Astros game mm-hmm. tomorrow afternoon. Or the Tigers game. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> how are you going to call cover? that? Yeah, we, we're, yeah, it's a Tigers <laughs> That's fine. I'm, Come I'm, on I understand. Uh, I get you, it. you can't say it's the Tigers broadcast, though. It is the Astros broadcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's the Tigers game. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Okay, yeah. and this song we're hearing right here, the Ataris, covering Don Henley's Boys of Summer. This is the band before the Baylor game. A little pop punk Clint is so yep. happy right now. Two and a half so weeks. excited. Uh, there you go. We don't I, know our I game told you the story. Yet, when I was a when I was a child, well, like young teen, listening to this, I was like, "This is a great song. These are, these guys are really good at writing." Oh, it's a cover Oops, of Don man. Henley. <laughs> Excuse well, me, just went through puberty I again. I bet it's a fun set. I oh, bet it's, it's going to be a uh, fun set, yeah. This is the bowling for sip, soup. Love bowling it. for sip. Bowling for soup pick here. Love it. Need to pronounce properly. This has been the Tech Talk Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.